I want to talk to you today about what it means to be a creator and understanding how to really do that, like really tangible ways that you can apply this to your daily life. Now, granted, I teach this on the website. Um, I have courses. I have different types of things that you can do to learn how to be a better creator. But I wanted to do a video for the general public to help you to understand this better. And um, my seven year old actually inspired me to do this video because I've been talking to my children about how to lucid dream so that they don't have bad dreams and to take control of those nightmares and, you know, create the tools that they need within those dreams to prevent them from being afraid in their dream state. Um, I, I personally feel that it's very important for children to know how to protect their self in the dream state and to understand that just because they're children doesn't mean that they don't have any control because we all have control over a lot more than we realize. And a great way to practice manifesting and creating in your daily awakened life is to practice lucid dreaming. Um, my little boy that's seven was very excited to tell me this morning as he woke up that he manifested a triple chocolate cookie, triple chocolate fudge cookie in his sleep last night. Well, when he had went to bed last night, he didn't get to have dessert before or after he finished his supper uh, because he took so long eating that, you know, it was going to be too close to bedtime to have sweets. And apparently he was really bummed about not getting those sweet treats. So in his dream state, he manifested such a thing. And, you know, he literally told me that he said he wanted a triple chocolate fudge cookie and snapped his fingers and boom, it was there in his hand for him to enjoy. He was extremely delighted to tell me that he had successfully manifested this treat in his dream state. And it reminded me of um, a statement that, Einstein once said that I've actually taken to heart throughout my um, teaching portion of my life that simply says, if you can't explain it to a six-year-old, then you don't understand it well enough yourself to teach it or to explain it. And um, he's seven, my daughter is eight, and they are both very well versed in working with the spiritual world. And uh, I was very pleased that he was successful in his lucid dreaming last night. And so I want to do this video and speak a bit on how you can use lucid dreaming as a tool, a practice, homework, if you will, in order for you to learn how to manifest and create in your daily awakened life. So I'm going to share some uh, slides with you. And hopefully I do this right and don't mute my microphone like I did the last time. I've already tried to do this video once. Okay. So lucid dreams are when you know that you're dreaming while you're asleep. You're aware that the events flashing through your brain aren't really happening, which means that you have control over them. The dreams feel vivid and feel real. You may even be able to control how the actions unfold as if you're directing a movie in your sleep. And that is the key to it, ladies and gentlemen. If you view your life as a movie, then you understand how you can step back and look at it more like you're the director instead of the actor, the participant. It's not happening to you. It's happening around you. It's happening in front of you, you see. So you can change things. You can alter certain events um, to be more favorable, to keep you safe, so on. Now, granted, you can't change free will of other people, but you most certainly can change anything within your own six degrees that could bring you harm or uh, danger. You just have to know how to focus your thoughts correctly. 
lucid dreaming is again realizing that you're dreaming as it's happening it takes place during your REM sleep the dream will feel vivid and very realistic and it is possible to control the events within the dream now in this picture you see this woman laying here sleeping but up in the corner in the little cloud picture she looks like she's flying like superman this is your spirit form in the astral realm our spirit leaves our body every night as we sleep and goes into the astral realms the spiritual realms heaven whatever you want to call it okay the cosmos the we go out into the universe we travel if you understand that your spirit is leaving your body and traveling to learn these things, then you can understand that your spirit can leave your body in your awakened state as well to do remote viewing, to do psychic viewing, to uh, foresee how something could play out, um, look at the odds of probability for different scenarios so that you can better choose what types of things transpire within your events. Now, the average person, the average person that is not actively trying to lucid dream, that does it merely by accident, um, on average, it's approximately 55% of adults that'll have at least one lucid dream in their entire life. 23% of people will lucid dream at least once a month. These are people that are trying to awaken with maybe without realizing that they're trying to awaken to their gifts, their abilities. Um, and so it's happening kind of accidentally on purpose. But if you are focusing your intent as you go to sleep, knowing that you can control your dreams, knowing that you can be aware of them, knowing that you can remember them well when you wake up, um, and focus that thought, focus that intent upon going to sleep, you're going to, your percentages of this are going to go up exponentially. Um, also as well, I would advise that you keep a notebook or a journal next to your bed so that as you wake up the next morning, before your feet hit the floor, before you pick up your phone, before you do anything, grab that notebook, grab that paper and start writing down what you do remember about your dream state because your dream state is where we learn to work through issues, um, emotional stuff or problem solving that we need to work out in our daily life. Your dream state is where you will do all of that troubleshooting and, and um, recon, if you will. So if you keep a dream, a dream journal by your bed and you start working with that um, also as another tool of homework and practice in, in becoming a better um, creator in your awakened life, you will hone your skills. Um, a lot of people feel like this is, this is uh, time consuming or hard to remember or whatever, but you know, we're, we're creatures of habit. So if you start, um, attempting to make this a habit for you, eventually it will become a second nature type thing for you to do. And then you can hone those skills of um, being a good manifester, a good creator for your daily wakened life. And then, you know, maybe you don't even need the dream journal so often, or perhaps you don't even use it at all if you become so well versed in being a really good creator. But the dream journal is definitely a good tool to exercise with. So a lucid dream is conscious dreaming, where the, the dreamer is aware that they are dreaming. And as such, they can feel the events or vision flashing in front of them and understand that they're not real. It's only a good or bad dream. So again, if you can learn this in the dream state, then you can also learn to understand that the same rule applies to your awakened state, that these events are not necessarily real. 
they're not set in stone type of reel. You can alter them. You can change many things. Um, again, um, I brought my daughter back to life, my oldest daughter, when she was 10, almost 11 years old. And, um, you know, clearly none of us want to lose a loved one. And if we allow the room for the acceptance of it, then it will continue to happen that way. Um, and in some cases, I would say that that's probably okay because, you know, in some circumstances, it is their time to pass and we shouldn't be um, trying to mess with that. You know, we shouldn't be trying to alter that. But in this particular case, my daughter was in a very freak accident and um, no one was injured but her in this accident. And in a lot of ways, I think it was intentionally happening in order for me to jump fully with both feet into what I had been learning and um, practicing because I am here to teach this. I am here to help finish Jesus's message that we are so much more than they're allowing us to know that we are. And so if this particular event had not have happened to catapult me into the direction that I now am fully living in, I wouldn't be here telling you any of this today. Um, but in that moment, I dropped to my knees and I yelled as loud as I could to God. And I said, don't take her. Tell me what to do. And very loudly and clearly, he told me, you know exactly what to do, but you can have zero doubt. And that is the key to all of this, zero doubt. You can't say, I want that really great job, but in the back of your mind, think that you probably won't get it. You can't say, I want to have really good health and feel great again. And then on some level think, it won't happen for whatever reason. If you apply the limits, the limits will be there to keep you from manifesting the things that you do truly desire in your life. So where there is a will, there is a way. And when we have strong will, we don't allow limits to apply. We don't allow them at all. When our strong will, our headset notion decides we're going to do something, by God and his power and grace, we do it. Because we were gifted the ability to do so. And the best way for you to practice that and hone that is in your dream state, just as my seven-year-old did. So in a normal dream, you have spontaneous dreams, kind of like in your normal life, spontaneous events will happen. There may be poor recall. There may be frequent and quite commonly no control over the narrative, whether it's the dream state or the waking state, you feel out of control about the whole deal. But when you lucid dream, you're conscious, you're aware. You have great recall and it's very uncommon and much less frequent for you to not have control over your dream narrative. And as you practice this, it will flow into your daily awakened life to where you have more control. And it is more uncommon for you to not have control over your body and your choices and your awareness and your experiences that happen to you in this lifetime. There are common characteristics of lucid dreaming. Increased heart rate, good self-awareness, better control of your emotions, 
better dream recall after waking up and higher than normal brain activity during sleep. All of which, again, will flow over into your waking state of being with a healthier heart rate, a healthier awareness of yourself and opinion of yourself that in turn will lead you to the true self-love and self-respect and self-pride that you should have. The society does not teach us or encourage us to obtain. But if we are all essence of God and the kingdom is within us, then we most certainly should walk this beautiful green earth with our head held high and our shoulders back, knowing who we are and loving who we are because we love our God, our Father, our Creator, and He is within us. That in turn gives us better control of our emotions. We don't have to be all over the place. We can be stable. We can be calm. No matter what flows at us. Our memory improves. Our brain function improves. To where then you will start to learn how to even manipulate and control time which is very important, very crucial in those heat of the moment situations, such as in a car wreck, like my daughter was in. And if I had known then what I know now, my daughter would have had the ability to help control time and that accident, though it wasn't meant to be that way for her. My other children have that ability. I have seven total. As a matter of fact, my middle child, my fourth born, she's the one who prevented us from having an accident that I was driving the car in because she saw something happening that I didn't see. And she was able to control the situation because of what I had taught my children. She saved us. She kept that truck from going through the side of my car and killing all three of us and blipped us to the other side of that vehicle and kept us safe. And that was a very real thing. And I have a video on that if you want to go back through my um, video library and find that. That was a very um, huge thing for her as an experience and for me. Because we do have tools that we can arm our children with that can help protect them and us. Like the three-year-old who walked out the door with her dad as a drive-by shooting was beginning to take place. And she knew and believed that she could put a sh protective shield around them that would deflect the bullets. And it did. While her father, the adult, instinctively dropped to the ground and threw his body over top of hers to protect her from the bullets, thinking for sure they were both going to be hit. And he was absolutely alarmed when it was over to realize that there were no bullets anywhere in either one of them. And she beamed at him and smiled and said she put her shield up to protect them like Superman. This isn't just a few people that can do this in the world, folks. We all have this ability. We are all God's chosen. They just don't want you to know. In order to be considered a lucid dream, you should be aware that you're dreaming. You should be able to make decisions. You should be aware of yourself in the dream, consciously aware of yourself, aware of the dream environment, and aware that you can change the environment if you need to. You are aware of 
what the dream means to you in that moment. You are aware of your ability to focus on the dream as it happens and to change or alter anything within it that needs to be changed or altered. The same will apply to your awakened life once you have practiced this and become well versed at it. Much like Schrodinger's cat. I don't know why that just happened, but this better still be recording the whole thing. This crazy Zoom. So with Schrodinger's cat, it's both alive and dead at the same time. It's the multiple worlds theory, odds of probability. <clears throat> Where is your focus? at because any number of things can be your outcome can be your result of any event at any given time and if you give up the choice to decide how this outcome looks odds of probability will choose it for you We are in a matrix. We are in a simulation, if you will. A lot of people are becoming more aware of that. But what they still can't wrap their head around is that we created the matrix so we control it. And we can change anything. We have that power within us. Other people have known this knowledge for a very long time and they've kept the knowledge hidden from us and manipulated us to create for them, for their bidding, for their greed, for their desires. It's time for you to wake up to your full potential of who you really are. Who we all really are. And understand that God is within us. The kingdom is within us. And we can change any of it. On this journey, we are all here to awaken our inner truths. We walk the same path, yet no two stories are ever the same. We are connected as one through our collective consciousness. Although every single sacred soul is individually unique. We are all a different camera lens viewing it from a different perspective. I deeply honor your soul energy. And yes, this path is challenging. But you have been put here at this very moment in time because of your courage and your strength. It's all for the greater good of humanity and our precious Mother Earth. Ascension means changing us to change our future timeline. One where our children's children will know a world of harmony and balance. We pave the way for all here on earth, for all creations of life. We are who we've been waiting for. And it is a truly special time to be alive. With all of our intentions set together for love, respect, 
peace, harmony, and balance. Good will prevail. I want to personally thank you for being a part of the greatest story of truth and unity that will be foretold for future generations. My mind is calm. I am connected to spirit. Spirit flows through me. I will release all anger, grief, and I will take time to think and listen to myself and my guides. I will remain calm and centered, even through chaos. I will allow spirit to flow through and guide me. I will project positive energy to the universe, and I will receive its gifts in turn. I will increase my powers of healing and perception, and I will use these powers to ben benefit myself and others. I will open myself to love and prosperity, and I will invite them into my life because my mind is calm. I am connected to spirit, and spirit flows through me. <laughs>